I'm going to do a quick demo of painting some mountains. I don't know if you can see my pencil sketching, but I have a mountain range up here and the same kind of mountain range down here. And the upper one, I'm going to paint in just using one color that's in different values. So that's called a monochrome. And then down here, I'm going to paint the same thing. I'm going to try to use the same values, but I'm going to use different colors in each layer. And to paint the mountains, I'm going to build up successive layers of washes. So I'll do the first light wash, and then I'll dry it with a hair dryer. I'll put on some selected areas of um, uh, kind of medium washes and dry it with a hair dryer and uh, then add my final dirk. So you can follow along if you'd like. I have my mixes already ready to go. I have kind of a really thin, a medium, a medium thick, and a very thick mix. I'm using, in this case, indigo. And let's see, I'll use this brush. So I'm gonna start with some clear water. And in this case, I've decided that I want to um, leave a couple areas of the mountain where it's showing white as if there was a little patch of white. I'm actually looking at somebody else's painting that I found online of a mountain. And I'm gonna kind of just roughly follow that. So I'm just leaving a little place in the middle here where in this area where there's no water. And that's gonna be my snow field. And I'll refine that a little better when I when I get my paint on. Right now I'm just adding water by getting that piece of paper wet. Okay, so I'm gonna take my thin, thin color. Make sure, let me double check and make sure it's a little, a little too thick. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Make sure I have a nice, thin, thin mix for this first layer. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna just put down some thin over this whole range, except, except where I want the snow to go. See, I'm, I'm painting wet on wet in this case. Just to give myself a little bit more time to work. Let's see, I'm having to kind of look from the side to see where, where I put, left it clear with no water, left it dry, I mean. I'll just leave that area white. I'm gonna come down this, whoops, I missed, so I'm gonna make that mountain a little bigger. Third mountain. So when you draw these, when you draw your mountains, if you'd like to try this, try to get as close as you can. If you're following along, try to get as close as you can to what I have. Okay, now I have um, a light wash of wet on wet. I'm going to take advantage of why it's still wet, and I'm probably going to add um, some slightly thicker, kind of medium thick in a few areas just for fun. That I can start blending in. While the wash is still wet. Okay, I think I'll leave it at that. And maybe I'll put one more here, like that. Okay, now I'm going to let this dry, uh, which in this case means I'm gonna turn off the, my video and I'm going to uh, use a hair dryer to 
dry it completely so it's completely dry, it's no longer cool to the touch. Then I'll be able to put the next layer on. Okay, we're back again and I've dried my mountains. So I have this mountain that's in the foreground and then I have two that are in the back. And I'm ready to put on my next layer. Um, some things I have to keep in mind, the mountain that's in the front is gonna have the most detail and is gonna be the darkest. It'll have the, uh, the whole thing won't be dark, but it'll have the darkest darks on it. And the ones that are in the back will have darks on it, but not quite as dark because as mountains uh, or landscape go away from you, things get lighter. Um, and this, this is completely dry, it's warm to the touch. I, you can't paint on it until, until it's no longer cool. And for this next layer, I'm gonna paint wet on dry. So I'm not gonna put down a clear water wash. And it's a, what I'd like to have you do is to try to follow along and paint as closely as you can to what I'm doing, which I'm just kind of making it up as I go. Um, but I'm taking my kind of medium thickness and I'm going to try to define the difference between this mountain and that mountain, which means I need to put a little shadow right here. So I'm going to just come in here. We'll see how this turns out because now I'm just kind of making it up. I'm just kind of, I'm not making a straight line. I'm just kind of making a little wiggly line. So try to paint. If you're doing this at home, try to paint it as close as you can to what I'm doing. I think I'll leave that little ridge there just for fun. Uh, let's see, should I put another little ridge over here? Uh, maybe I'll make one that kind of goes down here. Something like that. There, that's probably pretty good. Yeah. Actually, I think I want another one up here. Again, I'm just kind of making this up as I go. I decided I'm gonna kind of merge those together. There, okay. I'm gonna go on to this one. Uh, I don't wanna put anything dark there because I want a sense that this mountain is in front of that mountain. But I need to add some texture here. So let's see, how shall I do it? Um, let's, let's come here. This seems like a natural little spot. Seems to me this whole side of the mountain can be in shade. The sun is coming from this side, so everything's gonna be shadowed and shaded on the other side. And let's see, let's see if I can add some more interesting little features. Um, let's put a little bit of a, something down this way, maybe coming off of here. I'm just trying to create some variety without covering up all the first layer. And it looks a little, uh, I can see my strokes, so before it's completely dry, I'm gonna go back in and add a little bit of paint to some of these areas to help that all blend together. When you're painting wet on dry, you don't have as much time to work. There, that's better. Uh, what do you think? Should I put some over here too, maybe? Maybe something that's uh, right here below the snow field. Keep it a little bit irregular. Maybe I'll have it come out like that. And maybe something else over here. more just because I'm drying out too fast because I didn't have enough paint on my brush. I'm going to come up here a little bit. 
there. Okay, we're more interesting. And let's see, I think, I think it might be nice to have something up here too. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to suggest a mountain. Okay, I'm going to put a shadow on this mountain as well. On the back side. And in this case, I decided to carry it down here, kind of blend it at the bottom. I'm just kind of making it up. Let's see. Maybe I'll put a little bit over here. And let's see. Kind of blend it in there. Sure, it's really warm in my studio, so it's drying super fast. Okay, how about like that? What do you think? Does that look a bit okay? Am I happy with that mountain? I can, live with, I can live with that. Okay, now I need to let this layer completely dry. So it's back to the hair dryer and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, here we are. Everything's dry. So notice that the first layer, which was the lightest, you can still see a lot of it. I'd say at least half of it, maybe a little bit more than half is still visible. Um, so I didn't just put the, the medium color on the whole mountain. I left a, a lot of the light to show through, light layer to show through. And so with each additional layer, as I'm getting darker and darker, the area I'm applying it to is getting smaller and smaller. And so I'm going to apply some really pretty dark pink now. I'm going to be very selective about where I put it. Um, I'm not going to put it on this mountain or this mountain, I don't think. Uh, at least not right away. We'll see. I'm going to start with just having it on my foreground mountain because um, that one's in the front and so it's going to be the darkest. Um, so on. Going to come over here. And I'm just randomly applying it. There's no right or wrong about how you do this. You just try to do your best to make something that looks kind of mountainy. I want that shadow to really come down so that it looks like it's different than the mountain behind it. But you can see I'm still leaving some of the medium color visible. I'm going to come in here and just randomly make some of this a little bit darker. Maybe right around there. And let's see, how about right through here? I might make it more interesting if that was just a little bit darker in just some areas. I don't want to fill the whole thing in. That would be too much. Okay, what else do I need? I'm thinking I need maybe a little bit more darkness at the bottom of this mountain to delineate it from the mountain in front of it. So even though it's farther away, I'm, I am gonna put a little bit of darkness down at the bottom. Which will help push the main mountain more into the foreground. And I'm just adding, again, just filling in some of that. I didn't fill in all of it. There we go. Yeah, I think, I think I want a little more dark right there. There's no right or wrong. It's just, it's your mountain, so 
As we know, mountains come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. There, how's that look? Mountainy, kind of? Okay, and we'll call that good. So this is just an example of what you can do with just one color and, and three or four different values. I'm gonna blow dry it really quick and then we're gonna do the same mountain, but we're gonna use some different colors to make it happen. So see you in a minute. Okay, I think we're ready. I decided to um, use two different colors to make our next set of mountains. I used um, ultra, ultra marine blue and burnt sienna. And I mixed them in three different colors. This one has more burnt sienna and just a little ultramarine blue, and it's fairly weak, so I've added more water. This is my kind of medium thickness mix, where I have kind of equal parts ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And this is my thickest mix, so it has the least amount of water in it, and it's more ultramarine blue and less burnt sienna. And so I did some color swatches, and these are the three colors that I'm gonna be using. So two colors, uh, but they created this kind of range of colors that I can use in the mountains. So I'm gonna start with my lightest color and we'll see if I can sort of duplicate what, what I did before. So I believe I started with a wet wash just to give myself time to work. And I think I'm gonna get a bigger brush. I think my brush is just a little on the small side. Let's get in these mountain ranges and I need to remember to leave a little dry spot somewhere over here. You could put this first wash down as wet on dry. Um, I just have a special fondness for wet on wet because it, it blends so nicely and it just gives you more time to work. But there certainly would be nothing wrong with you doing this wet on dry especially if you had a brush that would hold a lot of water. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna put my first lightest mix. And you could do any colors you wanted. You could go crazy with reds and yellows and all kinds of things if you wanted really colorful mountains. I'm just getting in this first layer and I'm not worried if there's little spots like this because it just makes it look even more interesting. And I want to make sure that I paint right up to beyond the water's edge here because I want to um, I want a hard edged snow field. I got a little softness right there, but that's okay. Okay, let's come on down. Notice how my strokes are in the direction of the contours. So instead of going back and forth like this, I'm following the contours of the mountain, which then if you do have strokes, brush strokes that show up, it, um, Helps make it look natural. Okay, there's that first layer. Um, maybe I'll charge in a little bit of color just for, of that medium color, just for fun. I think I did that the first go around. So this is that uh, thicker mix that I'm putting in. You don't have to do this, but it can be kind of interesting to add a little thicker mix while you're still in the totally wet-ish phase. And then it will kind of blend in a nice natural way. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. And I'm going to let it soak into the paper just a little bit so that there's no standing pools of water, and then I'm gonna use the hair dryer to dry it before I start the next layer. 
Okay, this is pretty dry. It feels warm to the touch, no longer cool. So I'm ready to try to put the next layer on, which I'm gonna pick this uh, kind of medium color that's, and I put this color on with the first layer, I put this color in and then I charged in a little bit of that color. Now I'm gonna be putting this color in, but I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be careful where I do it. I want to put it on no more than maybe 50% of these mountains. And I don't wanna do big solid blocks that are giant. Um, it needs to look natural the way a mountain would look. So I'll start with over here and I'm gonna dab because it's a little bit dark. There we go. And I'm just, I'm trying to follow my design up above. So that we have kind of two similar paintings just done with different colors this time. So if you're following along, try to do the same thing. We're trying to replicate basically the same set of mountains using different values, but this time we're using different colors on each layer. So in our case, it's a mix of the same two colors, but it's gonna give it a different look because of the percent of each color we have in the mix. The first layer had a lot more burnt sienna in it than this layer. The layer I'm putting on right now has well, roughly equal percentages of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Yeah, I said I did something a little different there, but that's okay. I'm going to carry this over here. I'm going to bring it over here, something like that. I guess I filled that in. Um, come up here, bring it down this way. Looks like it's going to look a little different from the first picture. That's okay. This is just practice. These aren't, I know that these aren't the best mountains you've ever seen, but it'll give you an idea of how to do this technique. Okay, now I'm going to carry and follow the shadow side of the mountain down, create that edge, and Want this whole, I think I want this whole area to be kind of shaded. And now let's do our last peak. Let's see. Looks like I had a little bit going down here. I'm trying to make it irregular, so I'm, I'm not brushing, I'm kind of squiggling when I'm putting in these, these little crevasses. Kind of squiggling with the tip of my brush in some areas so that it jumps around a little bit, it skips around. Let's see, I had something going over there. So my eyes keep jumping back and forth to the painting I'm working on and the painting above. So I can try to get something that's roughly about the same. Okay, that's close enough. All right, what's the next step? Let it soak in just a little bit, and then I'm gonna use a hair dryer before we put the final layer on. Okay, we're ready for our last mix. And I'm gonna be using the thickest mix of paint that I have that also has more ultramarine blue than burnt sienna in it. So it's gonna be a, a really deep, rich color, and I need to use it sparingly. I don't want to overdo it, otherwise I'll obliterate everything else. So this is just to kind of add some nice little accents. 
I'll start up here. And again, I'm just kind of following what I, I did before. So the first painting was all done with one color, just in different values. Um, that's called a monochrome. And this one was done with two colors, ultramarine blue and um, burnt sienna that um, I happen to know create just a huge, wonderful range of shades of browns and grays. You could just as easily have done these mountains in wild, crazy colors like reds and yellows and purples and all kinds of things like that. It's, it's, uh, there's no limits, just your imagination is the only limits. All right, let's see, let's add a little bit more over here. Have to make sure that you are using the biggest brush that'll do the job comfortably. I could probably use a bigger brush than what, I'm, what I have here. So I left a little more of the background showing on this one than I did on that one. I think I like that a little better. And, but I still want to make this edge a little darker just to kind of accentuate the difference between the, the mountain in the back and this mountain in the front. There we go. Want any more? I think I, if I wanted to, and I think I do, I'm gonna, I could come back here and charge in just a little bit more color up here just to make that peak and some selected areas just a little bit darker, just for interest. I'm using the same mix, but Just dabbling. Don't want to overdo that though. That's probably enough. Okay, I'm going to dry it and we'll see what this looks like. Back in a minute. Okay, here we have them. Same mountain range, done two different ways. So what I'd like you to remember, some key points. One is that when you're painting an object in watercolor, in this case it's a mountain, you have to to start with the lightest color and work up to the darkest color. And the lightest color you get by having the wateriest paint and the darkest color you get by having thicker paint. So that's the first thing, light to dark on a specific object. The second thing is you can put one wash of color on top of another color, on top of another color, and keep building in it until you get the texture and color you want. The only rule is each layer has to be totally, completely, 100% dry before you put the new layer on. And that means it no longer feels cool to the touch. And then the third thing is that I just want you to notice about this. Um, you don't have to do, in this case, I did wet on wet for the first layer and then I did wet on dry for the subsequent layers. I did the wet on dry because I specifically wanted hard edges so that it looked like kind of sharp mountain passes, but you could be easily be painting something where you want the whole thing to stay soft and loose. And in that case, you just do a wet on wet wash each time. Um, but it was because it was mountains that I picked wet on dry for the subsequent washes. So I hope that helps um, give you uh, a good practice that you can do at home. And um, I'll talk to you later. Thanks.